Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and welcome on stage the chairman of VaynerX, the one and only Gary Vaynerchuk. Raise the roof! What Come up, on! Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I love you very much. <laughs> Sharjah, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, there are so many things that I want to cover in this time, so let's just get right into it. Couple things. When, when you grow up the way I did, and for a lot of people in this room that don't know, I'll give you the one minute version because so much of the energy I'm feeling here today across the UAE and specifically at this event and on social with my interactions is I was born in the former Soviet Union and then I came to the United States when I was three years old. Um, my father worked every minute. I really didn't get to spend a lot of time with him until I was 14, 15 when I worked in the liquor store that he started working at for $2 an hour as a stock boy and eventually saved all his money and bought a store in Springfield, New Jersey. I was a product of the 1980s and 1990s in America, which I think when people look back on will be the golden era of education and what college you went to basically meant who you were gonna be in the world. In the face of education being the only way out in the 80s and 90s, especially for an immigrant, my mother created a framework that allowed me to flourish against my own DNA, my self-awareness, who I was, which was a DNF student, the worst grades that you could get in school, but also was a child that on summer day vacations or when it snowed or whatever was happening, I was always looking to be an entrepreneur. If it snowed in New Jersey, I was ringing doorbells looking to get money to shovel snow. If it was hot outside, I was setting up a lemonade stand to sell lemonade. From the beginning of my life, I was put in a position, luckily based on where I was and who was parenting me, to actually lean into my strengths and the things that I was passionate about. You know, it's very interesting what I'm actually thinking while I stand here, which is here we are 20 years, 30 years later from that boy where now entrepreneurship gives me the luxury, gives me the honor to come to all places around the world and people treat me with admiration and respect and kindness. Ironically, the explosion of entrepreneurship and events like this and movements like this don't excite me as much as most people think. I, of course, am a student, a product, and a humongous advocate of entrepreneurship. However, that is completely secondary to my passion around self-awareness and happiness. It is my great concern that the framework, the world that has put me on a pedestal, entrepreneurship, is going to blind some of you in this room who are actually unbelievably capable to be a number two, a number three, a number seven within an organization, but believe in the hype that the only way to win, or more importantly, what's cool now, is to be a founder. I encourage every single person here who has the stomach and the mindset for entrepreneurship, but I implore you, if you take anything from my keynote today, please go home and look yourself in the mirror and start having unbelievably honest conversations with yourself about who you are versus who you wish you were. Today, entrepreneurship in 2018, 2019, across the world is put on a pedestal. 
I promise you, today, I walk into an event like this and everybody wants a selfie and I get treated this way and it's unbelievable. But I promise you, as I stand here, I am very mentally prepared for 2027 when the global economy collapses and I start getting blamed for teaching or telling you to do entrepreneurship when your startup failed. For me, this is my life. When it wasn't cool, now while it's cool, and in a decade when it won't be cool again. I want that for you, because when you do what you were meant to do, when you're able to put two fingers in your ears and hear nothing, not the hate or the negativity, but equally not the admiration and the accolades, you're playing within yourself. You're playing within yourself. My great fear, my great fear around the world is how many people here are not playing for themselves. They're playing for their parents, they're playing for their friends, the things they buy, the things they start, the way they live are predicated on other people's opinions, not themselves. And so I'm not coming here to start with a buzz kill, but I also do not want to be delusional to the reality of the situation. To build a meaningful company takes a very long time, is very difficult, and more importantly, what has happened in the startup community, all those wonderful startups back there, everybody now is pandering to venture capital or to raising capital, not to actually building a business. Every day, thank you. It's important. And, and thank you so much for jumping on that. It's important because let me, let me tell you why in 2006, seven, eight, nine, I was taking all of my money and investing in Tumblr and Facebook and Twitter and Uber and all these things that I did very well with and why over the last four years I've invested very little, very carefully because there's a disconnect right now and there's illusions of the reality. If you stand here or sit here today and there is nothing that you could think about other than building a business because the process of building a business is your happiness not what a successful business allows you to buy? Well then you're a purebred entrepreneur. Somebody asked me today in an interview, what do I do with my downtime? I told them that I start other businesses. It's all I know, it's who I am. It's the same way when I see a teacher or an artist or anybody, when I can see through their soul that they were meant to cook or paint or build, or whatever it may be, I get such happiness. It's the same reason that people that I went to school with who make $53,000 a year, but I know they're so happy because it's what they want. They want to be home at 5 p.m. They want to be on multiple sports teams. They want every weekend off. They don't want the pressure. Let me talk about pressure real quick. Can I tell you why I stand here in this incredible event where entrepreneurship is being put on this pedestal, something I dreamed of my whole life that would eventually be cool, and I start my conversation with heavy levels of practicality? It is because this is the thing I most fear. When the last regime, school, had its day, you could get good grades, fake environment, very easy to manipulate, you could go work in a company, and if that company fired you or didn't do well, you had somebody to blame. You did not have to take any of the responsibility or have the scarlet letter of losing because you were part of a machine. The greatest thing about being a CEO, founder, entrepreneur is that when there is success, you get a disproportionate amount of the credit. The problem with entrepreneurship is when it fails, you have nobody to blame. One of the things that I'm most worried about is when you are a purebred entrepreneur, you don't care about losing. The process is your religion. Running the company is your oxygen. When you are not and you're doing it for everybody else or because it's cool, when you fail, you will have no place to hide and your loss will be very public and unavoidable. The reason I put so much pressure on people being self-aware is if you're a natural number two, six, 13, or 27, 
the negatives of being a number one are overwhelming and very difficult to quantify. You have to ask yourself today that when your business fails, are you okay with the judgment of your family, friends, your social media followers, and the entire world? And if you are, then you can move on your merry way. But if you are not, one of the great ramifications of this golden era of entrepreneurship is going to be the enormous amount of depression and mental illness when 99% of the businesses fail. That concerns me. My friends, please don't misunderstand me. I don't stand up here and say, I'm an entrepreneur, you're not. I say that what this phenomenon has taught me, where I can go to the most amazing places on earth and many people know who I am, is that my timing for what I loved worked out. I take no pride in that. I understand that it's circumstantial. But I also know that this is why I'm so desperate for you to stick to your guns around your passion. Maybe you actually love playing video games more than starting an app company. When I was growing up, playing video games was a waste of time. Today, I think we can all agree, a professional esports superstar for the next 50 years, probably behind proper football and basketball, is going to be the biggest athlete in our world. This is nothing you could see seven or 10 years ago. You must, you must, you owe it to yourself to make sure that you're building a company around what you love, not because cryptocurrency is the current fad. When you chase money, you lose, always and forever, even when you achieve the money. This is how humans are wired. And so we have to have dramatically more thoughtful conversations around entrepreneurship, startup culture, and what's actually happening in the world. Because right now, most of the unicorns are just rhinoceroses in disguise. And please, and please don't get it confused. I'm, I, like every other person, have my selfish wants and needs. That last statement, that was selfish. DRock, where are you at? I did that right now, the unicorn for rhinoceroses, for one reason. I know that 95% of the successful internet companies that we all put on a pedestal are so over leveraged against the reality of their business that when there is an economic slowdown or collapse and they can't raise capital against a ridiculous valuation, they will disappear. Not because I'm smart, it's because I'm old. The one great thing about being 43 is I've lived through three collapses. A lot of people, how many people here under 32 years old? Raise your hands. Jeez. <laughs> the biggest gift and the biggest vulnerability is that you're 32, right? The biggest thing that, look, there's so many things that are running through my mind. Number one, one of the most fascinating things running through my mind, looking at the Namia area and looking at North Africa, the Middle East, it, it's devastating to me how much of the young talent here thinks they need to go to America or other places to achieve their goals when there is so much opportunity. I mean it. And and if you're like me and you love your family, I wasn't even willing to move to Los Angeles because I needed to be close to my mom and dad. The thought of going to another part of the world when the disproportionate opportunity is doubling down on your region is fascinating to me. It's a credit to the thing I most care about, which is brand building. America's great achievement in the last 100 years is using Hollywood to build its brand. Please do not get confused. There is so much opportunity within a square mile of your home, let alone the rest of the region, that you do not need to be naive and think you need to go somewhere to achieve your goals because I'm jealous that I'm not under 32 sitting here with the outlook that I have. When you look at the mobile penetration, the percentage of the youth, when you just look at the sheer opportunity that is in the general region, it's extraordinary. Too many people underestimate what's in front of them and overestimate what's outside of them. I mean it. (laughs) 
let's bounce around a little bit. I'm gonna take it to a slightly different direction because I think it's unbelievably inherent to so many people in this room. I generally believe, and by the way, not everybody should do video. Not everybody should do video, have somebody following them around with a camera. Not everybody should do video. However, if you're sitting here in the room, front row, last person back there, if you are not producing content for the world on the internet, whether that's because you're a tremendous writer and you can write on your own blog, on Medium, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, pictures because you're unbelievably visual, you can take a beautiful photo and then write a wonderful three or four sentences on your Instagram post. If you're stunningly handsome and charismatic (laughs) and you can do video, please, but if you are great at talking but uncomfortable in front of a camera, and you have to do audio in podcast form, please understand my biggest truth here today, which is if you are not sharing your thoughts, your process, your journey, your progress to achieving your goals, the stories you wanna tell about your startup, product, service, if you are not communicating to the world, and if you're not thinking about what's valuable to them, not what's valuable to you when you communicate, and that is a very big point, I'll say it one more time. If you are not communicating to the world, and when you're communicating, if you're not thinking about what's valuable to them versus what you're putting out for yourself, you are basically irrelevant in a 2019 world. As much as it may be difficult for many in this room, if you are not living through here, you are not known. This is the game. Unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know how you see technology advances. I'll I'll surprise you. I'm not so pro technology revolutions. I'm just practical. I don't, I think, my friends, at 18 years old, me, at 18 years old, had spent less than two hours on a computer in my entire life. I am not fascinated by technology at all. 3D printing, I don't care if you make 80% of your homes 3D printed. I'm not passionate about that. VR, AR, blockchain, all of it. Not really passionate to me. I'm passionate about communication. And that's where this happens. If you are underestimating this, and when I say underestimating this, if you have not made a significant commitment to producing content for the one of seven apps or websites that 80% of this entire region spends a disproportionate amount of time penetrating and listening and consuming, you are becoming vastly, vastly irrelevant. So if you leave with anything from this talk, number one, please lean into self-awareness. There is so much delusion running through this conference and this region and this world, it's devastating because it will not end well. Number two, Once you establish that self-awareness, you must speak. Everybody speaks differently. Through pictures, words, audio, video, but you must speak. You must speak because that is absolutely the leverage that you sit with. We're sitting in a time right now where across this region, there's so much opportunity, there's so much attention in a YouTube, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter world, it's, it's unparalleled. There's never been a time where every person in this room with nobody in the middle has the ability to reach anybody they want. My friends, actually, how many people over 40 in this room? Raise your hands. Over 40. <laughs> I wish, and I'm sure I'm looking at a bunch of you right now, there is a complete misunderstanding of the disproportionate opportunity that everybody in this room has. All of us who are over 40 dreams that we entered a world with this many options. We were stuck in the machine where there were one or two paths. There was no options. You were crippled by options. You are crippled by options. Which now leads me to the most important part of this conversation. The number one thing that I think about every day is why do people live their lives based on other people's opinions? 
the number one thing that I really want to have, how many people here under 30? One more time, raise your hands. Man. The number one thing I wish for everybody who just raised their hand is my ability to spend a two hour dinner with your parents. In that dinner would be the most interesting insight. Especially regions like this, it is fascinating how many people are dealing with the pressures of what their parents want them to do versus what you want to do. This, (laughs) woo is right. And the reason you're wooing and the reason that I'm most fascinated is I am fascinated by watching parents parent their children in the exact way that they hated their parents parented them. It's, it's remarkable to watch. You would think somebody who was forced to go to university and become a doctor, lawyer, engineer, banker, all that pain and anguish that those years created, you would think that they were capable of not repeating it, but the problem is the great insight of my life is how many parents parent their children only and 100% based on what other parents think about their children. This is the most important topic in this region. In a world specifically to this region where there is so much opportunity, the paradigm shift that is needed is one on the parenting level to create the freedom for children to be able to become happy, not check the box of what they're supposed to do. Now, before all the 30 year olds clap and say, hell yeah, Gary, before that, there's one part of the equation for all the children that are so happy with this framework. If you take your parents' money, they're in charge. So I love to talk about you should go do your thing, you should live your life for you. I'm passionate and I believe this, that I'd much rather most of you have two or three years where you're fighting with your parents but then have 50 years of happiness because you're not living with regret. I'm passionate about that. The problem is I've been blown away by how many kids think they can go start their own company while their parents pay for their lifestyle. You either live on your own two feet or you do not. Ninety-nine percent of the startups back there will fail. Ninety-nine. Ninety-seven. The amount of people that ever achieve a business that does a million dollars a year in revenue is almost non-existent. Yet, we live in a world now where everybody thinks 50% of people are gonna build a billion dollar company. Optimism is foundational for entrepreneurship. Unless you are blindly optimistic of your idea, you'll never get it off the ground because everything around you will say no. Delusion is the great vulnerability of startups and entrepreneurs. Being practical and realistic and being optimistic is very feasible. Unfortunately, it is rare. If I could ask anything, how many people here have a startup or an entrepreneur? Raise your hands. If I could ask anything of those, please start converting your business into something that actually makes money, not is in the need of funding. Because when you look at the framework of what's happening globally, We can't survive this much longer being this globally over leveraged. And when it falls, it falls hard. It fell hard in 2007 and 8. You guys know. It fell hard in 2001. It falls hard and this is the most over leveraged we've ever been. And so, please, if you leave with anything besides self-awareness, please leave with, am I prepared to turn my business in something that generates profit? not is checking the box for the amount of users or CAC or LTV 
or monthly downloads or all the things that venture capitalists and funding wants you to do in a game where those people are playing a very simple game. You have to understand what investing is about. They need to push every one of their products very hard because if one gets through, it pays for everybody else. The problem is, if you're one that got pushed too hard and didn't build an actual business, you didn't win. The fund won because one of the 50 companies did. We need a call to practicality. We need a call to practicality in our ecosystem because without it, the outcome is always ugly. Also, when you've had such a long period of global, and I know there's different markets and I understand, but global prosperity at this level without any fiscal accountability, it's just a matter of time. So my call this morning, this afternoon, is a couple things. Is this really the game you wanna play? Because let me remind you, I'm awfully jealous a lot of my friends who were number three, seven, 20, and 41 at Facebook and Uber and all the other companies that did well. Number two, how practical is your business? Have you succumbed to the jargon of startup world where everything is about users and viewability and CAC and all these terms that have nothing to do with are you making more money than you're losing every month? Let me tell you how much talent it takes to lose money every month consistently. Zero. It takes zero talent to lose tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars every month while you're building to your exit. It looks good on a chart, except the chart isn't real. So what does that lead me to? That leads me to the opportunity. I'm gonna get very practical with you. If you as a person or you as a business are not buying Instagram story ads in this region right now, right now, in this region, UAE, across the Middle East, North Africa, if you are not doing that right this second, you are making an enormous mistake. I am the byproduct of buying underpriced ads my whole career. My dad's liquor store that I grew from 30 to 60 million dollars in five years with no money is because Google AdWords were five cents a click and nobody else was buying them. I, Gary V, the character, was because I was buying ads on Twitter when they were underpriced, then YouTube, and currently today, right, on Instagram stories. I'm, on this Arabic Gary V account, if you wanna go look at any website that shows the graph of growth, this is very meta, this is unbelievable timing. This is my biggest thesis, I see a lot of you shaking your head, that means you consume my content of underpriced attention, buying ads, but this is probably the most excited I've ever been to talk about it because this account, Arabic Gary V, literally, literally, 10 days ago, had 700 followers. It now has 30,000 followers, it has nothing to do with me being in the region, How much? 42,000, thank you brother. Don't clap. Clap for yourself when you do what I did. From 700 to 42,000 on one thing. We found on Instagram stories a piece of content from a quote or two that I had, converted into Arabic, bought across Arabic speaking people across the world, where I am converting followers for 1.9 cents. If you've been in the ad game, I'd be thrilled for 1.9 cent impressions. I would lose my mind for 1.9 cent engagement, which would be a like or passing it on. To be able to get to 1.9 cent followers is ludicrous. I've never seen it when my team texted me a week ago and said, weird, we have some news, your Arabic page is exploding, we found 1.9 cent followers, I replied and told them to spend all of my money on it. (laughs) All of it. You, and this is very meta, you will watch my notoriety in this region over the next nine months go through the roof. Here's why. Even though I just told all of you to do it, 99% of you will not. This is the story of my life. Even though I've just told you, 
99% of you that the number one underpriced move in the region, regardless of your business, is to buy Instagram story ads and make a lot of different content until you find something that's working for you, I am convinced out of the last 10 years of my life that 99% of you will not do anything about it, which will allow me to keep achieving very underpriced attention. If only half of you started to run meaningful ads on Instagram stories in this region, that price would triple or quadruple. This is the great fascination of my life. Even when told, verbatim, black and white, in your face, exactly what to do, somehow, miraculously, you will not. You promise? Stand up. Let's clap it up for him. He will. And now let's clap it up for his shirt. Look at that shirt, clap it up. Good shirt. I like it, man. It's really fascinating. That is what's happening. And that is the great misnomer, that is the great opportunity, that is the great vulnerability. We look at the past and put it on a pedestal and we look at the current and the future and we demonize it. I'm fascinated by that. We look at technology advances and we demonize it. Yet, it is the only place we're going. In America, a very big trend, especially for affluent parents on the coasts, is to limit the time their children are on technology. I want my children to only live on technology. Thanks, mom. (laughs) The reason I do that is because that's the world my kids are gonna live in. The horses are not coming back. I am fascinated by people's inability to lean into the current. Like, who calls anybody anymore? How many people here, tell the truth, by show of hands, get mad when somebody actually calls them now? Raise your hand. Stand up, stand up if that's it, stand up. Please, I just want you to stand up. I wanna see this visual. Stand up, I'm gonna give you another second, don't lie. Stand up if you were actually bothered by somebody calling you. Stand up. Tell the truth. Just look around, everybody look around. This was the most common way we talked six years ago. Please sit. We are now literally, if somebody calls you, you look at it and you're like, hello, mom, why are you calling me? (laughs) This is because the number one thing that I trade on is time. Friction is the biggest vulnerability. For a lot of people in the internet business, this is why UX, UI, design, all this stuff matters so much. Any friction you cause is devastating. The second Wi-Fi is a hundredth of a second slower than you're used to, you are devastated. Voice is going to be the next frontier. In the same way that everybody here used to call, but now texts, because time is so valuable, and you have, it is actually common courtesy to why you're not calling. Calling somebody now without telling them that you are calling is an invasion on their time. Soon voice will replace that. If you really wanna be on the cusp of what's next, I genuinely believe that Alexa and Google Home and voice activated UI is going to be unbelievably powerful. It is a very, it's a very, very vibrant place. It is. And so that's one place to talk and pay attention to. But this all rounds up to a very simple conversation, which is, if you look at the history of time for entrepreneurship, for the human race, there's all leads to one road, which is timing. Timing. It's unbelievable how much timing plays a factor in all of this. So many people back there and in your heads are playing too much in the future. Three years ago, all my friends spent all their money on VR, virtual reality. Meanwhile, I didn't know one person who spent an hour on virtual reality a month consistently, right? So many people talk about the future, timing, Of course AR, machine learning, VR, all this stuff is coming. But until you see it with real people, 
it's an enormous leap and you're gonna get your timing wrong, right? On the same token, the things that I'm passionate about, when I talk about Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat, it is only because it's current. In four years, I will sit on stages like this and I will laugh at everybody here buying Instagram story ads because the market will catch up and thus it will become overpriced. Both demand for the ads will rise, so the price will go up, and you'll stop paying attention because more ads will show up. This timing, this trading, this pulse is the single most important thing once you understand who you are. Please start paying much bigger attention to consumers' behaviors, to timing. I was interviewed right before I came up here, and the nice woman said, who do you pay attention to? Who do you listen to? And I said, nobody. I don't read books. I don't listen to podcasts. All I do is read you. Tonight, when I'm at the airport on my way home, I am gonna look at the hashtag of this event, and I'm gonna see what you had to say about the event. I'm gonna see what you had to say about me, about the opening keynote, after I consume you. If you want to win in a consumer product, not B2B. If you want to win in a consumer product, I highly recommend you start training yourself to read the consumer, not a thought leader's point of view on the consumer. I would far prefer that you read every comment about your content and your space's content versus watching my content every day of the week. The reason I have had such a successful career is because I don't guess. I do the work, then I execute, then I talk about it quickly. That is my career. The fact that we now live in a world where the consumer's point of view, opinions, are being posted immediately in real time is remarkable. Do you know how many people here wanna build more followers and influence yet don't reply to the comments on their posts? The sheer audacity that you want to get bigger with the world, yet you don't have the time to reply or thank the 13 people that give a crap about you now is laughable. The quickest way I know somebody's not on their way to being an influencer is based on their behavior with their community publicly. Please invest back into the people that invest in you. I don't know if you heard, but the reality of being a human being, according to modern science, is 400 trillion to one. If you follow me for the last couple years, you know I'm obsessed with this because I can't wrap my head around it. As somebody who likes math as much as they like art, the sheer thought that it is 400 trillion to one to become a human being is almost difficult for me to swallow and leads me to my final point, which is mindset. If you are sitting here and you are not driven 100% on gratitude, you are misunderstanding how impossible it is to even be a human being. In the fact, it's true, in the fact that you could have been a rhinoceros, or a tree, or a ladybug, it is so remarkable to me how people have not quantified the most basic thing how I sit here, I stand right here in front of you, driven 100% on gratitude. I am so thankful to even get the chance to do anything, let alone what I'm doing. I promise you, when you wake up every morning, you don't need a meditation pod, you don't need a book, you don't need a podcast, you don't need me. If you wake up and actually say to yourself, the likelihood of me having a life is more rare than getting struck by lightning 10 times, you will put life in perspective very quickly. Dwelling or complaining or crying about what you don't have versus understanding and leaning into what you do have is exactly the same way that I understand that I wish all of you knew how much better it would be to build a business here than to move to Silicon Valley. There's no money, 
There's no accolades, there's no awards, there's no amount of followers that can subsidize actual happiness. Actual happiness starts very internal. It starts with how you see the world, it then leads into who are you listening to, and then it goes into your actions. The fact that 85% of this audience raised their hands and they're under 30, which makes me know that they're gonna live three more full lives based on modern medicine, makes me desperately try to push everybody here for perspective and patience. And right now, everybody's going way too fast, wants everything way too fast, and if I could get you to slow down and pay attention, then I would scratch the itch, and I stand here, not only driven by gratitude, but I stand here today, my friends, driven by guilt, I have enormous, I mean this, an enormous level of guilt of how lucky I was to be born with nothing, to grow up with nothing, to have to earn everything for myself, and most of all, to have parents that put me in a position to listen to myself and nobody else. I wish that on all of you. I wish you nothing but health and happiness, and please, please, rewind this talk, because if you follow even a percentage of the blueprint, I think something good will happen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm just gonna sign this book for him. What's that, selfie?